Right. Um, we'll talk about uh, linear algebra required for machine learning. Okay. So that's one of the most uh, crucial uh, mathematical concepts we should be familiar with uh, when we deal with uh, either machine learning or deep learning okay? um, or any uh, anything in data science. Okay? It is uh, linear algebra, which is the fundamental of most of the stuff. So we'll start from the basics and build the intuition. Okay. So let's start with the very basics. Okay. Let's say you have two equations like this. Uh, x plus 2y is equal to 8, this is equation number 1, 3x plus 5y is equal to 20, that is equation number 2. These are just two, uh, uh, two um, system of unit equations that we wanted to solve for x and y. Okay, what we normally do is uh, we kind of let's say we multiply the first row by minus 3, we get minus 3x uh, minus 6y um, is equal to minus 24. Okay. And uh, this is one method of uh, solving this problem. There are many methods. Okay, this is one method. Okay, then the next row, I mean, the, two, I mean, the equation 2, just keep it as it is. That's 3x plus 5y is equal to 20. Now, if you try to kind of add these two, these two gets cancelled. Okay, and this becomes uh, minus y is equal to minus, uh, minus 4, which essentially means y is equal to 4. Now, we know that y is equal to 4. We plug into this equation. Okay, what happens is x plus 8. It becomes x plus 4 into 2 becomes 8 is equal to 8 and x becomes um, 8 minus 8 is equal to 0. So we have found the solution of this equation uh, x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 4. Now this is just a very simple uh, system of linear equations which is solved uh, for x and y. Now if you try to represent this um, in, a, in a graph, okay, let's this equation. Uh, what you can do is you can say the equation y becomes y is equal to um, 8 minus 2y. I just bring this uh, to the other side, subtract it. Okay. And um, sorry. 2y is equal to 8 minus x, and y is equal to 8 minus x by 2. Okay. This is the equation number 1. We just rewritten this equation number one in this way. This is equation number one. The equation number two. Okay. Again, y is five y is equal to twenty minus three x. Okay. Twenty minus three x. So y is equal to twenty minus three x uh, divided by five. This is equation number two. If you try to plot this equation into a uh, into a graph, okay. Probably you will have two lines which is uh, having solution at x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 4, which means that these two equations cross at x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 4 at this point 0, 4. So you will probably find two lines like this, okay, and which meets in this point. Okay, that's the solution of the equation. So if you're able to kind of directly uh, take this equation and put it into a graph, we can visually find a solution quickly. Okay, this is the point where the, the both points crosses. Uh, sorry, both the lines process okay, at 0, 4. Or you can uh, use this elimination method and also find it. So this is this is a system of linear equations which we typically solve in um, in, 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 in a kind of a fifth grade or sixth grade algebra. Now let's just take this as a different representation. Now if you see this is the equation, okay. Now if you put this equation like this x and y into pairs of numbers, what happens is it becomes like 1x and 2y. And this becomes 3x and 5y. 3, 5. Okay, this becomes a matrix representation of the same equation. Okay, 8 and 20. So this is this is the same equation 1 and 2. I can return this. This is called matrix notation. Okay, x takes the value 1, y takes the value 2, and here x takes the value 3 and y takes the value uh, value 5. And if you multiply this. Uh, with this x and y, you will get equal to this. So, how the matrix multiplication works is 1x plus 2y, this is what it is, and 3x plus 5y, this is what it is. So, this is matrix, this is a vector, we represent it by a bold uh, letter, and this is uh, the value constants. So, linear algebra is all about uh, dealing with matrices and vectors, okay, and uh, trying to um, apply this, some of the techniques of linear transformation into the existing data and try to find solutions for the problems which are difficult before transformations. Okay, that's, that's what linear algebra is mostly used for machine learning. 
Now let's take um, a step back and see what is a vector first. Okay, a vector is uh, as a, I mean like there are two ways you can represent vectors. Okay, in, in physical physics or physical world, you can represent it by an arrow, which is which is having a magnitude and a direction. So let's say this is uh, this is a, this is a point A or vector A, and this is like vector B. Both have um, a magnitude and direction. This length of this is called the magnitude, and the direction is let's say this is like one, two, three units. This is like um, one, two, three units. So this is like one comma like three units in the x-axis, like three comma one, and this is like three units in the x-axis and four units in the y-axis. Like this is three comma four. So like three comma two. Okay. So this is like, um, and if you try to draw um, a, a kind of a projection here. This forms a triangle, and if you find a triangle, you can find the length of this side. Okay, like uh, using uh, the equation of uh, um, of uh, of Pythagoras theorem. Okay, so this is like the length of this becomes. Uh, let's say this is a triangle, and you want to find the length of it. This is three. This is one. So this becomes. Um, um, let's say that uh, this uh, the magnitude becomes. Let's say this this side is c c c squared is equal to. 3 square plus 1 square. So c is equal to square root of 9 plus 1, that is square root of 10. This becomes the length of this. So this is the magnitude and this is the direction. This is how uh, you represent a vector. In, um, um, in, in, in computer science, mostly they represent vectors like this, okay, 3 comma 1. Okay, it means the same thing actually. It's a list of numbers where you can have, um, it has like, um, like an x units, I mean, in x direction you have 3 units and y direction you have 1 unit. This is, this is the way you represent vector, uh, vectors in, uh, in computer science um, and this is how you represent physics and normally we will deal with vector like this. And what does matrix do to a vector? So when we have two different things, okay, we, this, we wrote a simple equation and we try to uh, kind of um, show that okay, uh, matrix can be multiplied by a vector and it, it, it does something. So what matrix just to a, a vector is called as linear transformation. Okay, let's take an example here. Um, let, let's say my hand, this is a robotic hand, okay? Um, and I wanted to uh, make this hand, take this apple from this point A and place it into point B. That is my objective. Okay, now this, this the position of this uh, arm is a vector. Okay, just like we had the position of the arm here, I mean uh, the vector here, the position of the arm is a vector. Now, I have to do something to, to, to make this arm move from here to here and place this here. So this, this op operations which I do on this vector is what we call it as matrix operations on the vector. So the matrix can either rotate or scale. Okay, what it really means is that I can I can I can take this apple from here, make a rotation like this, and then scale like this. Or I can make a very big rotation like this and directly keep place it like this. There are multiple ways I can reach this point B. Okay, either by uh, by different way, uh, matrices, if I multiply this vector, I can do different operations. Like like let's say I can I can I can move here, then here, and then come here. Okay, there are multiple ways I can teach it. If I, uh, and and each operations um, applied on this um, uh, vector of, of say length x and y, uh, and, and 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 it, it helps to make make this hand move from here to here is called the matrix operations or linear transformations. So in in short, matrix either scales a vector or rotates a vector. That's what it does. Now why this is crucial in data sciences? When we deal with, um, with a lot of data, okay, let's say, um, uh, the, the, I mean, let's say we have a vector of uh, house prices uh, versus a um, vector of, uh, of the features of the houses, like say number of bedrooms, now the location of the house and things like that. We have a lot of uh, coordinates like X and Y. We have like, it can be multidimensional. So when we wanted to do uh, some uh, operations on, on try to find understand the data better, we may have to do some transformations to uh, simplify uh, or make dimensions uh, smaller to make it uh, more in, more easy for us to understand. And matrix plays a major role in doing uh, doing I mean in doing those transformations. Okay, that is why we deal with matrix uh, vector transformations. So this is this is the this is the fundamentals of uh, of matrix vector uh, multiplication actually. Okay, and uh, and and linear transformation. So what, what else can we do with, uh, um, with the matrix and a vector, okay? Um, and um, what we can uh, do is, I'll, I'll give another example which is called as um, a dimensional detection 
uh, or we can call it as um, um, an, an, yeah, we can call it as dimensional literature actually this. Let's take an example here. Okay, let's say we have a uh, matrix uh, which has got, um, um, let, let's take uh, the Netflix as an example actually. We have a lot of users in Netflix. Let's say we have two users and we have two movies, uh, movie one and movie two. Okay, we have two users who have rated two movies and they have rated uh, movie, let's say four and um, Let's say we have three movies. Okay? Let's say we have three movies. Movie one, movie two, and movie three. They rated movie uh, one as four, movie two as five. The user two hasn't watched the movie one. He has watched uh, the movie uh, two. He has rated five, and uh, he has rated the movie three as four. So um, this is a, this is an example of a matrix uh, which uh, in real world. Okay, you will have a lot of users and a lot of movies, maybe millions of users and thousands of movies, okay, and, you, and you're able to kind of uh, have data for all uh, all of the users and the corresponding ratings that belong to the movies. Now well, the question is, um, can I recommend uh, um, some movies which are similar to, um, I mean like uh, to a user 2 based upon uh, their ratings uh, by understanding the ratings of other users as well. So I'm trying to find out, okay, Similarities between users. Okay, if I'm able to find similarities between users, I can probably give, give an, I mean, make an intuition that uh, if user one and two share similar uh, taste, they probably might uh, might uh, like similar movies. So we are trying to make this. Um, I mean, make use of this matrix information and trying to recommend a movie based upon um, other other users' uh, ratings. Okay, because we cannot expect every user to kind of watch all the movies and rate everything. That's, that's next to impossible. So we wanted to make use of the information available from the existing um, uh, users rating and try to um, uh, recommend uh, movies for uh, for others. Okay, and, and, and in that way we will be able to find kind of uh, not randomly recommend something but understand uh, the preferences based upon the pattern of numbers and try to recommend it. This is called the matrix completion uh, problem and also um, it helps to kind of uh, reduce the dimensions to really if you wanted to make uh, computations on top of it because if it, if it is very large like uh, millions of rows uh, of users and thousands of movies and it becomes a very large matrix and uh, even for the greatest computers it might be it makes it difficult to compute so we use dimensional detections to reduce the size of the uh, of the matrix as well so i mean just give an intuition okay see so see look at here okay i mean look here um, um like uh, the user 2 has rated the movie um movie 2 as 5 the user 1 also rated the movie 2 as 5. So which means that they both like the movie. And the user 1 has rated this movie 1 as uh, 4. Okay. And user 2 has rated the movie 3 as 4. So if you really want to um, kind of uh, ask the question, okay, what is the next movie I can recommend for this user 1? It makes sense that probably you can recommend uh, movie 3 because they looks to share some information which is close to each other. And, um, and and similarly, if you want to recommend a movie for user 2, probably you can recommend movie 1 because uh, they, 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 there are chances that they might uh, share the same, um, um, I mean, taste. I mean, even though it's a very, very tiny example, if you try to, uh, I mean, think a large and, and kind of uh, think about a lot of users and a lot of data and ratings, this completely makes sense actually, okay, trying to kind of recommend uh, and fill the matrix based upon other users' information. So, if you are able to uh, kind of find a pattern within the data, okay, and kind of um, uh, able to repeat, uh, um, I mean, uh, repeat the, or uh, I mean find the values of the one, one row or a column uh, using existing rows that defines the rank of the matrix. For example, if you if you if you if you are, if you have a, a matrix like this, actually, like one 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 two 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 three three three, the rank of the matrix is one because you see a pattern here. Okay, if you increment one, if you just add one. With this number, I can get this number. If I increment uh, one, I mean, uh, if I add two with this number, I can probably get this number. This is the rank of the matrix. So, rank of the matrix depends, like the, I mean, the, the least amount of uh, of information you need to kind of reproduce the entire matrix. So, if you're able to understand, okay, if I if I able to uh, get uh, this number one, and if I know that if I add, can, if I can add just one, uh, I mean. One to it to get this uh, get this uh, column, and another one to it to get this column, and this defines a rank one matrix. So similarly, if uh, if you are able to find a pattern of uh, of of numbers here or a ratings here, which which you can represent the one more uh, column or one more row, uh, then we will be easily able to kind of uh, 
of uh, of mean find the users and ratings uh, based upon the based upon the ranks and reliability of the of the matrices. This is one way. The other way is to kind of reduce the dimensions of it. Okay, like um, um, using factorization. Okay, so what is factorization? Uh, let's say you have a number twenty four. Okay, you can represent it like a product of two numbers, uh, six into uh, four. You can still represent six into like three into two into four. So basically, you can represent the same number twenty four as a multiplication of six into four or three into two into four. It does it is factorization. So why do we need to factor something like this? Okay, for uh, to solve some problems which might be uh, easy if we factorize. I give one more example. Let's say we have something like x squared minus twenty five and divided by x plus five. You wanted to solve this uh, solve this equation. So if you factor this x squared minus 25, you can probably write this as write it as x squared minus 5 squared by x plus 5. Okay, which can again can be written as x plus 5 into uh, x minus 5 divided by x plus 5. And if you cancel these x plus 5, you, know, you have an equation which is like just x minus 5. So this is this is an example of factorization. Okay, you are able to kind of Make a complex uh, equation into simpler. Uh, I mean, into a simpler one by just uh, more, uh, rearranging stuff and making things simple for us to compute. That is what is called uh, factorization. And um, similarly, you can do a factorization on the matrix as well. So one of the popular way of um, of using um, matrix factorization is called single value uh, singular value decomposition, which is an extension of uh, a kind of an eigen decomposition. So what it really means is that you can take a larger matrix like this. And represent it as product of three matrices U, sigma, V transpose. Don't worry about what it all really means. Basically, you can you, you have you have you have your number twenty four here, and you have product of like three into two into four. So you are able to kind of represent this number into three different uh, um, factors. Um, I mean, using simple multiplication. Similarly, we are able to break this entire matrix into three different matrices. Okay. So when you do this, there is there is a there is a There is there is some benefit to it actually. Okay, what happens is uh, you will be able to um, break down this matrix um, and like like a large matrix. Let's assume that we fill this uh, using um, uh, some matrix completion uh, and uh, and we recommend and fill this fill these values. Now you can you know instead of representing this entire matrix as a as a as a whole uh, large set, you can you can probably break it into uh, smaller matrices uh, using three different breaks like matrix one. Matrix two and matrix three. Okay, that is what is used in one-way transpose. So the the one in the center, okay, talks about uh, a diagonal matrix, like it is called sigma one, sigma two, sigma three. If it is, uh, it is nothing but a square root of the eigen value and uh, the eigen vectors. I'll tell what what eigen value and eigen vector means, but you just uh, keep in mind this is, this this denotes um, some um, I mean like the way to kind of extract meaningful information the descending order. Okay, the the first uh, singular value talks about the maximum information uh, you can extract from this, and the second singular value talks about the next best uh, information you can extract from this. And if you're able to kind of break it down into kind of simple singular values, instead of having the entire matrix, you will be able to reconstruct the uh, the original matrix using uh, three smaller matrices. So this helps to save uh, save uh, computation time, save space, and also um, kind of um, red reduce. Redundant features which are not uh, very useful, okay, and um, and um, we can we can make this uh, more intuitive and meaningful, okay. So this is how we can represent this matrix. Don't I mean I mean if you, if you put into a calculator uh, or, or like a, like an like a like an application in online or uh, through kind of applications like Wolfram, you can you can do uh, or in Python. If you ask for uh, the ask to compute the SPD of uh, any matrix, it will probably give you this, okay. And and there is nothing. Um, We don't have to get into the details of how the computations are made because uh, we have uh, programs to do it. But get the intuition. Okay, we just are trying to break uh, larger stuff into smaller stuff. Okay. Now, when we do this, um, we we kind of let's say uh, we have three singular values and the fourth singular value is zero. And the singular value is zero, which means that we are trying to make a lot of this sparse uh, uh, columns and rows which are not having adding any value and setting it out to zeros. We are just eliminating some of the information. And another way to intuitively understand what this breakup is, we would be able to hidden extract the latent features of this uh, large matrix. Let's say we have users and the movies. Okay, in this this uh, this probably can give you a matrix which talks about um, um, user to movie preferences. Okay, 
So I'll not use the removing process. Um, user to gener, movie gener, and this is uh, gener, and this is gener to movie. Okay. So we are trying to kind of find a relationship or latent information which could which could probably tell this user likes this movie one which is probably talking about uh, uh, kind of uh, action and uh, romantic movies so i mean we can we can give some meaningful representation of user to general preferences okay it's not going to be 100% is action 100% is romantic it would be a mix of it you will be able to break up uh, and get some latent information about these uh, user to movies uh, user to gender uh, okay and then probably this represents the gender of the movie and this represents the gender to movie uh, association. So, if you're able to get this intuition uh, of how the latent information can be extracted, that is again a useful information uh, to kind of, uh, um, I mean, uh, to to kind of, um, I mean, use in dimensional detection. Okay, this is this is this is how uh, linear algebra is used in um, kind of matrix factorization, uh, matrix uh, decomposition, like uh, Aiken decomposition or singular array decomposition. Okay, and um, and this is how matrix is used uh, for linear transformation. So I'll give one more example of linear transformation. Okay, so that will that will make sense. I'll take an example out here. So just uh, take a take a look at this vectors. Okay, you will you'll find two vectors here. Okay, you will find um, two vectors here, one pointing in this direction, one pointing in this direction, and uh, let's say my hand is a matrix and this is a vector. I am I am applying some matrix transformation um, on these vectors. Okay, and if you see here, if I if I if this is my hand, this is a matrix and this is applied on a vector. Notice this vector. What happens to it? Okay, it kind of uh, changes its direction. Okay, it was originally straight. If I if I do this twisting, it kind of moves upward somewhere look at this vector okay if i if i turn it does it does not uh, change the the orientation or, or the direction in which the vector points okay even if i do a transformation sorry uh, if i do a transformation like this it kind of shrinks a little bit but expands a little bit but it does not change the change the i mean like the the path in which it is pointed to okay this these vectors are called eigen vectors okay that and uh, why it is very important is Certain certain vectors, when you do linear transformation, do not change the their orientations uh, beyond the axis. Okay, that that helps to kind of uh, uh, kind of reconstruct the original matrix after the transformation. Why are uh, why are we doing transformation in the first place? To just make life simple and, and computations easier. But after doing transformations, if there are some vectors which are like kind of retaining the original original uh, structure of the uh, of the vector as much as possible those are golden uh, vectors right those golden vectors are called um, eigen vectors and the, and the value by which it kind of retains the proportion by which it retains the original information after scaling uh, is called the eigen value for example if i rotate i mean if i apply this transformation this vector is kind of scaled uh, scaled with the, with the proportion of, uh, of, of information um, it has in, in this vector, it is called the eigenvalue. Okay, and this is an eigenvector. And in this case, this is kind of tra completely transforms this original location, right? It kind of moves somewhere. Okay, let's let me do it this way. Okay, let's see. Let's see, this is a matrix. It moves somewhere. So this is what is called a matrix. Uh, I mean, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And uh, those are very useful to kind of, um, uh, kind of, I mean, trying to reconstruct uh, the original matrix back after transformations. So again, uh, to kind of get an intuitive intu understanding of transformations, think about log transformations. Why do you do log transformations? If it's a large uh, multiplication, if you transform into log, it becomes probably additions. Additions are probably easier than to multiply. If you do a Fourier transformation, let's say a complex uh, wave in the time, time spectrum, you can convert it into a frequency spectrum, a frequency domain that makes it easier for us to kind of understand and analyze so all transformations are, are kind of made to make our life simple and make our computations uh, easier so linear algebra uh, talks about um, how to apply these linear transformations to the existing data and make make our lives uh, simple by making it uh, easy to compute and easy to um, easy to store okay thank you